Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. I wasn't going to film a video today, I'm actually just heading over to meet up with my buddy Andre. We're going to go to the bike shop, get some uh, lubricants, basic maintenance materials. But this morning I saw that the long-awaited by some people, namely me, 72 volt Raw Mantis was just released or announced. I'm not sure if we can buy it quite yet, but this is the update to their 60 volt model, which is also brand new. I think it came out uh, in the first half of this year. And I gotta say, even the original Raw Mantis was a pretty nice package, not the best thing ever. So it's an electric dirt bike, it falls into that category. So right in line with the Saran, even the Teleria Sting R. It does have a pretty nice motor, 7,500 watts. And all of that remains the same on this new version, except the battery voltage. It's 72 volts, still 35 amp hours of capacity, so the overall watt hour energy is higher, around 2,500 watt hours. Pretty substantial. I would certainly be happy with that. Aside from the electrical components, as you would expect, the bike is full suspension. It looks pretty attractive. It implements aluminum, but it's still pretty heavy. It comes in at 165 pounds, and I know most of that comes from the massive battery, the big 7,500 watt motor, but uh, I would say that's definitely the biggest drawback of the Raw Mantis. Out of all the electric dirt bikes, like the Suron, Teleria, it's certainly the physically biggest and heaviest. But you guys know how much I love 72 volts. It makes a huge difference, especially if you're looking for that high performance, a twitchy throttle response, a good high speed. It makes all the difference. And I think that makes this Raw Mantis one of the only electric dirt bikes in the market that stock is 72 volts so that's certainly a nice selling point okay uh andre he should be here super 73 but no andre oh yeah and it didn't tell you guys the price tag yet this is potentially the best part so with its large 72 volt 35 amp hour battery beefy motor the price tag at least right now maybe it's promotional or something but it's just an even five thousand dollars in comparison the Teleria Sting MX4 is forty five hundred dollars it has a similarly powerful motor I think it's eight thousand watts so technically a little bit more but still limited to a 60 volt battery now you guys know I've recently got a new bike and prior to buying this, I did a ton of research and I considered all of my options. And that included the Raw Mantis, although only the 60 volt model was on the market at that time. But I gotta say, even with this 72 volt version being at that attractive price point, $5,000, I think I would still prefer what I did here. Because this bike here is 3800 bucks with the battery controller upgrade. That brings the price tag to a very similar 5,000 ish bucks with this bike the suspension is even better. I think it looks great It's physically smaller than the massive raw mantis. It's not light, but certainly less than 165 pounds I think this is around 100 pounds. I didn't weigh it though And we don't have to deal with uh, a loud clunky maintenance heavy mid-drive configuration I honestly prefer hub drives in most kind of daily using situations Sup? Good morning morning so uh bike shop is that way yeah so this is gonna be a short trip but i'll use that time to give you guys an update on this bike i'm quickly approaching 250 miles on this build and i've had one problem so far i got a flat tire now that's not the bike's fault it was a nail it happens but it gives me a great opportunity to complain about the stock tires that come on essentially every bike. Whether it's the Rave Bullet GT or this expensive P51 that, I, again, was 3800 bucks brand new. They all have essentially the same tires. They're these knobby off-road tires. What is Andre doing? He's going to get me killed. Oh, these cars parked? 
Uh, that's weird. But yeah, they come with these, uh, most bikes come with these knobby, very thin, oh, that's the bike shop, off-road oriented tires. And they're like the cheapest tires you can possibly put on a bike and every electric bike comes with them. And they are so prone to punctures, even though they all claim to be puncture proof. So just to be clear, it's a bike shop. They got no bike parking. <laughs> the bike shop has no bike racks? Yeah. How do they not have a bike rack? I almost don't want to do business here. Yeah, this is the kind of bike shop that sells high-end bikes to people with Porsches. This is what I was talking about the other day. Cup holders. Oh, uh, yeah. Rather, that was a rather disappointing trip. A little bit. Yeah, just because... Everything was so expensive. Everything was so expensive, so altogether it came out to like 45 this, 70 This is 45 but Yeah, this is 45 We got tire sealant, I recommend Tire this. sealant, yeah. We got the uh, oil-based lube and then the uh, PPL 40 for... Uh, yeah, the, the stanchions. Struts. Yeah, yeah the stanchions, so... You needed a... Uh... They're just a little dry. Yeah, it's... They're so stiff. I would do, like, a finger technique. It said don't get it on your hand, but quite frankly, I don't care. Another thing I don't like about this bike, now that I've owned it a little bit longer, is the rear fender situation. What rear fender? This isn't cutting it, yeah. It's, uh... It looks clean now because I just cleaned it, but if you look close, this shock... The pivot point is just getting covered in mud. Back of my seat. This thing needs full length fenders. I can probably achieve that. There's no mounting points here, but get like a hose clamp to structure something off of. I'm already noticing a little bit of rust. Oh my gosh, a lot of rust back here. All right, test number one. Okay, note to self, adjust the handlebars. They got looser. I have an Allen key, but of course I had to take them out to clean them. So yeah. Oh, I have an Allen key. Oh, where? I'll hook you up. Friendship. Oh, no, I think the Camaro. Thank you. There's nothing worse than loose handlebars. God, no. By the way, I got a new backpack from Air. And it's the best thing ever. I'll leave a link down below. Whew. Nothing like a brand new backpack. All right, let's get out of here. Well, that was fun. Kind of. Very expensive. That greasy bot was $25. That's one of those uh, frou-frou bike shops. They had a couple e-bikes, but they weren't uh, this kind. They're the European mountain bike style that have like a 250 watt motor and cost 8,000 bucks. Those kind. This is a very steep hill. Ooh. I still don't fully trust my tire because I only patched it with uh, tire slime, which by the way was extremely effective. I'm buying these little tiny vials that are like an ounce and I'm gonna fill it with tire slime and like probably Velcro it to my bike and always have a little vial of slime with me. So future flat tires Put in the slime. I know you can pre Slime your tires, but after a while it, it hardens. It's not quite as effective So if you can keeping it in the bottle until the moment of use is best and then I have a little air pump in my backpack So hopefully in the future I'm good, but I'm gonna be changing out my tires. I'm actually split between two tires Maybe you guys can help me decide in the comments below Option one that I'm leaning towards is the classic Shinko SR241. I've used these before, the tread pattern, the durability, great tire. Only downside is the weight. And you guys know that with a hub motor in particular, the more rolling mass, the, the worse for your efficiency. So the Shinko tire is gonna decrease my range by probably like three miles. So for that reason, I, I have a second option. It's this one, 
I've seen it gaining popularity. It's a relatively new offering. Oh, we're going this way. The tread pattern, it's funky. I kind of like the way it looks. Although in terms of traction, I think the Shinko is still superior. But compared to other bicycle tires, it is a much higher quality, thicker rubber. So it should be very puncture resistant like the Shinko. And it weighs less. This comes in at about five pounds, which is a huge difference. So leave a comment, let me know. Which option would you go with? Hi, Andre, it's been real. Take it easy, bro. Take it easy. I'll see you on the, on the flippity flip. Well, yeah, we're gonna, we gotta finish the rest of that movie. And it looks like I'm ordering some gloves online. Yeah, dude, this is a glove station. See, okay, so yeah. See, that's glove station. I mean. Like this actual my... padding? Yeah, on, on both sides, yeah. glove station. Glove station. Word. Yeah, yeah, these are the ones. I'll leave them linked below the video for all of you guys to enjoy. But to quickly touch back on the new 72 volt raw Mantis. It certainly has a compelling price point, 5,000. If you specifically want a 72 volt high performance dirt bike, which you should, by the way, it's significantly better. Uh, it it kind of stands alone. Is there another 72 volt bike that's even similar to this? Now that's kind of a trick question because of course there is. My custom creation. And I would certainly pick this over the new Raw Mantis every day of the week. Aside from the flat tire and the lack of good mud guards, this bike has done me well. And honestly, I've, it's at the point now that I've gotten used to the suspension and I can never go back to anything else ever again. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you're still watching, like, subscribe. Always greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.